Am I on now? <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's always something technical that can happen. Welcome to Maplewood United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you're joining us here. We have, we are opening to some in person. Our capacity is limited. We are asking people to wear masks and to stay six feet apart during the time that you're here. That is just until it starts to seem like we're closer to it being safer to be in a different setting. Um, some of that is we realize that we will certainly be here longer than 10 minutes. So we want to keep everybody safe. Some of what those that are here will notice, I have put lots of signs that's not intended to be yelling at you, don't use this pew. I'm one of those people who hates to feel like I didn't know what was going on and be embarrassed because I sit in the wrong place. So my goal with all of the things that are out is to make it so that you don't feel like you don't know where you should be and what's going on. So we hope that you do indeed join us. So we have set up some overflow so we have a little more capacity than we did through the summer. Today's a good day to stay home. That's all I'm going to say, having been out on the roads. But as you're here to worship with us, I want to welcome you. The flowers that are here on the altar are in memory of Craig Mason's mom, who passed a year ago or two years ago this time. So we want to remember her and celebrate all of the ways in which she was part of this congregation and that joy. The others, I completely lost any announcements that I have. So a couple of things that uh, are just in the works. We're working on something for Monday, Thursday, and we hope you'll keep that in mind. And we do celebrate that our youth did their murder mystery via all of this fun technology, and I know that for the people that have grown up here, you saw lots of faces that you haven't seen for a while. I didn't, because I didn't recognize a certain number of them, but I knew that they were my group members from way back. Um, one of the things, where'd he go? There's been floating around, and you should see it in your prayer list, that Simon got a regional award for playing, and we want to celebrate that with him as well. Okay, I'm turning it over to you. Oh, no, I have to do the invocation. What day is today? Join me in the invocation. As we gather, we call out to you, our God who has brought us together, hands and feet in this world. May the distance disappear as we join together in worship. By your spirit, gather us in the circle of your love, so that no matter how far apart we are, we know the blessing of our connection. Let our worship reflect our love for you and the joy on our faces and the openness of our hearts, that we will be renewed and encouraged. Let us be like seeds scattered on good soil, that this time of uncertainty and distance will bear fruit for your kingdom ten times, twenty times, a hundred times. In the name of Jesus Christ, we call out and invite you in. Our first song today is Depth of Mercy. Thank you. 
Next song is Be Thou My Vision. And just as a reminder, if you are in uh, person with us today, you can still uh, sing lightly behind your mask if you want to sing along with us. So kind of getting back in the swing of things with some people here, one of the things that I've said the last couple of weeks is we are trying to, the blue cards which you all put your prayer concerns on and were passed forward so that we could share prayer concerns within the service as it still doesn't seem wise to kind of pass things around. One of the solutions for that I found was we got an, an app for, that you can download on your phone or tablet for the Maplewood United Methodist Church. It's one, you can use it to give a donation to the church while you're sitting here if you want to, or you can drop them in the offering plate. But if you go to it, it has a prayer wall. And so I just want to invite people that are here with us virtually, if you have a prayer concern that you would like lifted up during this time of prayer, then to go to the app, go to the prayer wall, and type it in. Um, some of the joys that I think we need to celebrate this week is there was Simon. We celebrated him. But we also celebrate that Rich's surgery went well this week, and that seemed to be going well. And so we celebrate, one, that he finally got it because it was the third time charm kind of thing as far as that was concerned. And we celebrate that John got good news even as he continues the cancer treatments, we need to keep him in our prayers for that. We also celebrate with him that he got some good news this week. As we go forward, there are lots that we need to continue to keep on our prayer. Um, Gail um, will keep continue to pray for her and see where she's at. Are there? I'm not seeing any others, so I'm going to take us to that time of prayer. So let us be in the spirit of prayer.
Holy God, as the snow blankets the earth, may your comfort cover us in total protection. As the le- flakes fall down, O oh God, may your healing power touch every corner of our lives. May the hope we have in you shine bright in the midst of even the darkest moments, remembering that you, O oh God, are the source of our strength the source of our hope, and that nothing that happens here on this earth can take us away from you. As we have entered into this time of Lent, in the busyness of our lives or the strangeness of our days, may we indeed intentionally step closer to you. Listen for your voice and remember that you give us a reason to rejoice. Holy God, as you have listened to our prayers in this time, those we were dared speak aloud or those that are deep in our hearts, may your will be done in every part of this world. In Jesus' name we pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our next song today is called Servant Song. So the passage this morning comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 for 48. And this kind of fill, falls in the category that I have set up for the year that includes living our faith, those things that Scripture tells us loud and clear. Starts, you have heard that it is said, love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I say to you, love your enemies. Pray for those who hurt you, and if you do this, you will be true children of, the Father in, of your Father in heaven. 
He causes the sun to rise on good people and on evil people. And he sends rain to those who do right and those who do wrong. If you love only the people who love you, you will get no reward. Even the tax collector does that. And if you are nice only to your friends, and you are no better, then you are no better than other people. Even those who don't know God are nice to their friends. So you must be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. May God bless the reading and hearing of his word. Now, this piece comes in a whole length of Jesus' sermon where he really says a whole lot of things that really should make us stop short. There are things like, here's the thing, if someone sues you for your shirt, instead of just fighting that, give them all of it. Not just your shirt, but all you have. In our terms today, that would be they sue you for $100 and you give them your house, your car, and all the money you have in the bank. Terms like that that we can look at and say, I'm not quite sure he meant that literally. Yet, he said it. And for me, those are those places that challenge me not to just say, I just have to be a nice person. Or, if I'm good most of the time, they're the places that challenge me to say, God is saying, I have to try harder. I have to push myself to not just do what everybody else does, but to go literally in, this pa- in the passages before that, go that extra mile. And so when we get to this passage, it's easy to say, well, he doesn't really mean I have to love all of my enemies, because we do that a lot, don't we, as human beings, as well, I don't have to be nice to that person. Let me tell you all of the reasons why I don't. Or they didn't really mean that. And when we look at scripture, we see the same kind of dialogue happening. The guy who comes up to Jesus and says, okay, so I just really need to know who is my neighbor? Who do I have to love and who can I cross off the list? And if you don't get it, Jesus' answer to that is everybody. Which leaves that man going, wait a minute. It's the part of the piece of that Good Samaritan story of the fact that it's a Good Samaritan when the Jews didn't think there were any such things as a Good Samaritan where the religious people walk across by on the other side of the road. Those pieces challenge us, just as this is meant to challenge us, in this whole sense of how do we fit into the world? How do we become part of God's story? Because one of the biggest parts of God's story that we love is that Jesus didn't come and strike us all dead. He died for us. That God's love wasn't just, they've got it, let, I'm so glad, let's let the ones in that understand. In fact, still can't get over the very ones who call him king at the beginning of the week will be the ones who cry, crucify him at the end of the week. And yet it is into that story that Jesus' response is, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And that brings us to this sense of what does it mean to love our enemies. And as I kept thinking about it, it is the difference in the world of the, when we think of somebody as our enemy, we have all kinds of words and descriptions we use that are negative, that make them horrible and awful. And all of those things are excuses for us not to have to care about them. They're the terms that come to our minds when we don't like people when somebody says, all Mexicans are, or all blacks are, or all the people on that side of town are. And those are the words that we use instead of to do what God wants as those excuses not to love. And we use those words to build a wall between us and the people we don't like or the people we don't understand, or sometimes, most of the time, people we haven't even met. 
Of course there's our enemies that are close at hand, right? The ones that live in our house or the ones that live across the street. But we do the same thing. We don't just say, I didn't like what they did or I don't understand what they did. We put labels on it as bad and horrible and evil. We call them names. And it's part of what has gotten us to where we are right now in our country is because anybody who doesn't di agree with us, we don't just say, they don't agree with us, I don't like, I don't have the same point of view. We say, they're horrible, they're evil. They're going to destroy the world until it has become almost too easy that there's not a word that isn't bad enough to stick on the person we disagree with or any crime too bad to accuse them of. And we've built that wall perfectly. Jesus says, instead of building that wall, instead of putting all of those words of hate between you and them and hating them, here's what I tell you to do. Build a bridge. Use words that connect you to that other person. Look for the things that make you alike, not the things that make you different. Remember that a mother in any part of the country, in any part of the world, from any way of life, all she wants is the best for her child, doesn't she? And the truth is, is if we look at our core as individuals, all we're looking for is security, a sense that we're going to have a place to put our heads down at night and not have to fear for our lives. That's true regardless. It may look different. But each of us as human beings is looking for that. And scripture tells us again and again, here's the thing you have to remember about that other person. Is there a child of God too? Christ died on the cross for them too, whether they know it or not, whether they've accepted it or not, God in his perfect love died for them too. Each of us, dare I say it out loud, Republican or Democrat, Black or white, Native American or Hispanic, married or single, divorced five times, ten kids or none, pumping gas, selling stock. Every single one of us, in God's sight, he sees us one way as his child, as those that he loves so much. And he said, here's the thing that we remember to build the world that God intended is instead of building a wall with all of the things we don't like or the nasty things we can say about one another, use good things. Use your words to build that bridge between you and someone else. Because that's where our security comes from. That's where we get to that place where we don't have to be afraid. That's where we get to be part of building the world that God intended. It wasn't just about being nice to people who are nice. Or being cordial to people that you have to put up with. It was about truly choosing to see each other as human beings. And look, I come from a place in an upbringing where the whole list of let's who decide who's on the outside and who's on the inside is really easy. I, I think, and I've told you this, and I don't know how much you understand, but Chuck Norris and John Wayne, they killed their enemies, didn't they? And they always won. That's the ideas that I was brought up on as far as TV was concerned. And the sense that as family is that we had to protect ourselves against the world that would try to destroy us. So I don't 
come to this passage to tell you I got it all figured out and this is easy. I come to this passage because it challenges me every day to remember that no matter how much somebody seems completely to be different than me in every way that I can imagine, that God, that Jesus said to me, you got to love them anyway. Not love them so that they behave the way you want them to, but love them because they, like me, are a child of God. Now, I will tell you that one of the pieces that I share again and again is that my sense of myself wasn't that I'm this great person. I'm not really good at music. I can't really sing. I wasn't really smart in school. I'm the middle child, which most of you should understand means I was a problem. Not very tall. Not very good at sports. Partly because I don't have a killer instinct. All of those things that were told to me that said, you're not good enough, help me remember that if God says I'm good enough, then hey... If he's willing to accept me, then he's pretty much willing to accept anybody else. And I know we don't all come to that place, but this passage, Jesus is challenging us in our faith not to just be kind of good, not just be kind of willing, but truly willing to love even those who drive us absolutely crazy. And that isn't about their behavior, it's about ours. Because the other part of this is that being willing to love the person even when they make your head explode because you can't understand how they see it that way. Is that our hope isn't in them seeing the world the way we do. Our hope isn't that somebody lives the way we live, does the things we want them to do. Our hope is in God's love for us. The being able to love our enemy is about realizing that our future isn't grounded in the world being shaped in our image, but in the idea of the world being shaped in God's image. And God's image in all the way through is this image of mercy. And I know sometimes we get into these debates about the Old and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, God seems a lot more judgmental, doesn't he? Yet if you look close, in every action God is doing, he is trying to bring people closer to him, not push them further away. Jesus is saying the same to us in this passage. Instead of pushing people further away, bring them closer. Instead of building a wall made up of all of the horrible things you can think of, build a bridge full of all of the ways in which you are just like they are. And the first one you can lay down is they are a child of God. Will you pray with me? Holy and gracious God, your love for us is what defines us, what makes us have a new life, what gives us hope even on the worst days. Help us in this season of Lent, O God, to truly come closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. As we prepare to sing our closing song, God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Our closing song today is They'll Know We Are Christians by Our Love. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one. Each 